So as you just saw, I got a new watch. It's right here. And yes, it is a Vacheron Constant, but no, it is not the overseas. I did that video a few months back, so check it out if you haven't already. So this wasn't a spur of the moment buy. I made sure I really liked the watch before I actually decided to buy it. So let's check it out. Here's the felt pouch that I took off beforehand because it's a pain in the butt to get off. Everyone tends to show the paperwork. No one really wants to see the stuff, so that back in there. And here's the box. It is a nice lacquered VC box. You have the Maltese cross motifs throughout the entire well, box, really. Actually, just the top. It's nice. It also has this little button here, which is super satisfying because it slightly opens it up. And inside, obviously, I do not have the watch inside because I took it out beforehand. The watch is actually right here. So this is the Vacheron Constant 56. So why or how did I end up picking this watch? Well, in the past year or past two years actually, we've seen a splurge of steel sports watches on all social media platforms. I don't know about you, but I got pretty burnt out of seeing the same watches every single day. So when I found something that wasn't a steel sports watch, I guess this technically is, but you know, one of the hype watches like these Mariner, Aquanaut, Nautilus, Royal Oak, my interest was piqued because there was more to learn about that watch, which doesn't necessarily mean that I like it more than these steel sports watches. And I'm sure you guys have seen how much press BC has been getting these days because of the new limited edition overseas with Corey Richards. The brand as a whole has been getting a lot more attention than they normally did. One day I was scrolling through Instagram and I found a post on the 56 and I knew absolutely nothing about it. I looked at photos, read blog posts, and looked at videos that were all in Chinese and Japanese because I don't know, I guess this is really popular in the Asian market. I had no idea what they were saying, but I just wanted to look at the watch, I guess. And after all that research, I really liked the watch. I kind of wanted to buy it on the spot, but I held off because I wanted to make sure that it wasn't a spur of the moment buy, which is something that I do for all of my watches. When I do go to purchase them eventually, I give it a few days of thought just to make sure that I actually like the watch and not just at that particular moment. So a few days gone by and I was looking for a watch to put on one morning and I noticed that my date just wasn't getting worn as much. Suddenly I had the thought of maybe it's time to move that piece along, but even when considering letting go of a watch, I give it a few days or weeks before actually doing it because it sucks if you sell it and you shortly regret that decision. However, I did start to get curious to see if there were any other interesting options for me to pick up that might be suitable alternatives to the Datejust. So in my opinion, the Datejust is a sporty dress watch. It's a very casual looking watch that can do both sporty and dressy very well. So I wanted this other option to also fulfill the same role. The first brand that came into mind was Grand Seiko because this is exactly what they put out. Very dressy looking sports watches. One watch that I really wanted to pick up from Grand Seiko was the White Birch and it is incredible. I held a couple in person and I was really close to buying it but I just couldn't get over the lug width of 22 millimeters. I love everything about it, the movement, the aesthetic, it's well within my taste, but something about the lug width and how thin the lugs are seemed a bit unproportional to me. So because of that reason, I decided that this GS is not the particular one for me. Another brand that I was considering was IWC, and it's not one of their modern releases, but one of their now discontinued models, the 3239 Engineer. I love bracelets, particularly integrated sports bracelets, and this is a watch that I've always wanted to own at some point. But because this is a discontinued model, the only option to get it would be through the gray market. Unless some boutique had it in their display case all these years, and it didn't sell. And I don't have anything against buying gray market. I haven't done so in quite a while actually, but it's just whenever I get something or whenever I think about buying a watch through the gray market, there's always this doubt, I guess, or fear of the watch not being genuine or having issues that neither the seller or buyer knew about until one day, 20 years later, it comes into or rather reveals itself, which is a nightmare for anyone. So that ultimately ruled out the Ingenieur, but it is still a watch that I want to check out one day. So if you have one, please do let me know. Now, throughout this entire, I guess, thinking period, I've always had a tab open on the 56, which made me realize that ultimately this is the watch that I still want. And so I set off to look for one and a few weeks later I picked up this Vacheron Constant 56 with the blue dial and this is the time only model with the steel bracelet. So I did pick this watch up a few weeks back and I did a video for my channel members if you want to check it out. 
here we go. Here we have the paperwork. So here is the unstickered Vashon Constantin 56. All right, let's hop over to the bench. So because I haven't had this watch for nearly as long as I would like, I can't do a full in-depth video about it. But this is just an uh, initial impression, I guess. There really isn't that much content about this particular watch. So I hope this video can be informative to those who are considering the 56. So let's talk about what I like about it. First would be the dial, obviously. I love blue dials. And this one has like a matted blue sector dial, which contrasts greatly with my overseas because that watch has a lacquered blue metallic look to it. So they're both blue, but that's where the similarities end. I also like the indices, how it alternates from numbers to regular stick markers. It keeps it a bit formal, but also very casual at the same time. This one features a date, but I love how they also include a marker for the three o'clock position. And I get why some people don't like the date because it breaks up the symmetry and also breaks the sector dial look. But I find it to be super practical on a watch that I would pretty much wear on a daily basis. Not that I would, but that's the kind of role that I wanted this watch to fulfill. I think the case shape is also perfect and a great size because it's not too big, but also not too small. It also has design hints from the vintage watch that this watch was inspired by which is why it's called the 56 and of course the movement is really nice to look at it has a sapphire display case back but the movement is a point of discussion where a lot of people seem to disagree about this is not technically an in-house movement i guess because it is a cartier based caliber that vacheron assembles regulates and finishes in-house the movement and the case also do not have the geneva seals that vc is known for which is primarily the reason why a lot of people don't consider buying this watch how i view it is VC didn't send it off, so they didn't spend more money on it. In return, the client also saves a bit of money as well. I find it similar to the whole in-house argument, how if it's in-house, that's great. If not, I don't really mind. But ultimately, they decided not to, and I'm okay with that. I still think it's a gorgeous movement that has been performing very well. This is also the most affordable Vacheron Constantin, and I think it is the most affordable watch among the big three brands. Obviously, the bracelet is going to add a bit of cost, but if you get it on the leather option, which all the other 56 watches come on, then it is going to be the most affordable option from Vacheron Constantin. I think the bracelet design is very interesting. It's not your typical oyster or jubilee design that a lot of watches are putting out these days. It comes on a nice clasp that's not too big, just perfectly sized so it doesn't get in the way of you wearing it or bother you throughout the day. And if you watched my overseas video, you know how much I love this bracelet because of its micro extension system. It's perfectly integrated into the clasp without adding any bulk, but also hidden when you don't need it. Well, I'm happy to say that Vacheron somehow also included this feature onto the small 56 clasp. You can pull the extension out on both sides, but also hide it when unused. I have yet to read or hear anyone major mention this online, probably because it's so damn well hidden. I'm very satisfied with the 56. I think it fulfilled the role of finding a more interesting alternative to my date just. But if I did have to choose between Rolex and VC, I'm going VC. Not hating on Rolex, I still own the Datejust and a Samariner. But I guess without this entire, I guess, watch buying journey, what I realized is just how many interesting watches there are out there. Like I said before, social media is basically filled with these same watches. And over time, it does get a little bit tiring and boring, to be honest. I still love them and I still want to own many of them. But when I do find a watch that is a bit more different or not a hype watch, my interest is peaked. So what I realized is that there are tons of watches out there that exist. I just haven't given them much attention, which is unfortunate because I might end up really liking it like with the 56. So I think it's important to not have tunnel vision and to keep your horizons wide open for other watches that exist, but you might have not considered before. Just because I'm waiting for particular steel sports watches doesn't mean that I should ignore the other watches that are out there. Obviously, this is a bit more dressier than a Royal Oak or a Nautilus or an Aquanaut, but it's still a very comfortable everyday wear but yeah super happy with this purchase i think it complements my overseas really well i will make a more in-depth video about this so that'll be coming out in a couple of weeks after i get more experience with this watch that's about it initial impression about my new vacheron constant 56 and what my thought process was behind going about this purchase thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already do follow me on instagram at loom underscore shot and i'll see you guys in the next video see ya